All right, guys, today we're gonna to be making a ice cream scoop using one of the Penn State kits for it. This blank here is a piece of Pal Rosa. It is an inch and a half by inch and a half square, four inches long, and it has a 15 30 second hole drilled the whole way through it. You do need a pen mandrel and the bushings to turn the ice cream scoop. We're gonna go ahead and jump right into this like any other spindle turning. Get our tool rest set up. Get it slightly below center. And these are a pretty good, easy turn. I believe the kit is around, I wanna say 12 or 13, 14 dollars, something like that. They're a really good, uh, easy kit to turn and really good for craft shows. Turn my light on here. Let's see. So we're gonna start turning at roughly 2,800 RPMs. And almost forgot the most important thing, safety glasses. Safety glasses are the most important tool in the shop. So, I'm gonna start off with a roughing gouge and start rolling off some weight. Roughing gouge makes pretty good, easy work of getting something in the rough round. I mean, it's in the name. So next step is we're gonna start looking at our piece and see what type of design we want the handle to have. You could either do one long arch over the whole piece, or you could kind of have like two small round handles and then a concave section in the middle. That's what I normally do, but for the ease of the video, I'm just gonna do one long curve. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn the lathe back on. Now that we've got it roughed in, I'm gonna turn the speed up to about 3000 RPM. And I'm gonna go ahead, move a tool rest in. And I'm gonna start trying to get that curve pretty good there all you want to do to turn these is just get the ends down roughly to the bushing sizes and then once you're there you're pretty much done other than doing any refining on your shape so to do the sanding and the extra little bit of refinement you want to do take the bushings flip them around so that way you don't eat into them with your gouge or your other tools. Get that put on there. Bring a tailstock back in, lock it down, give it a little bit of pressure, flip the lathe back on, and I'm gonna take a little bit smaller spindle gouge and just go over this and try to get a little bit better surface on it before we go to sanding. Get everything set back up, moved in a little bit more. All right. So, with this, I'm just gonna very lightly kind of kiss the ends here. And I'm gonna roll them over just a hair. 
And the reason I do this is because it makes it a lot easier for the end of your blank to blend in with the rest of the bushings on the scoop kit. As you can tell, that really did clean up the surface quite a bit. Now for sanding, I do a little bit of unconventional method compared to others. I am a fan of power sanding with a drill and a two inch uh, foam back sanding paper. So let me open up my drawer here and get some paper out. I normally like to start at about 180 and work my way up to 600. Let's see, we'll start at 220. And as you can tell, you probably hear it in the background, I have a fan going on the lowest setting. This does make a ton of dust. So sanding, turn it on, and I'll set it to about 2500 RPM. Let me get a good battery in my drill here. So I have these little 12 volt Makita drills. They are a huge time saver for stuff like this. And this is just like a $4 kit off of Amazon. I will say, buy some good sandpaper. I like the Duragold stuff for this. So we're going to start off in the high speed and just sand side to side. Only light pressure is needed. Now take a little bit extra attention on the ends and kind of round them over a little bit. So that was our 220. Step it up. Go to 320 next. Feels good and smooth and we have a really good surface finish and that takes about a quarter of the time doing it that way with the power sander than it does to do it by hand so I normally like to go ahead and finish it off by hand with a piece of 800 grit paper and that gets rid of any swirl marks left by the drill in that 600 grit. So we'll just go over this really quick by hand. Nothing crazy here, just light pressure, hit it decent, that's all it needs. Wipe some of this dust off. And that piece of Palrosa there is looking pretty good. Go ahead, put this piece of paper up so I don't lose it, waste it, and I'll be right back with stuff to put the finish on. So, 
for the finish, I really like to use walnut oil. This is Mahoney's walnut oil. It is food safe. The only concern would be if you have a walnut allergy, I would not use this then. I would use regular old mineral oil. And for this, we're just gonna take a little paper towel, put a good liberal amount on there, and I'm gonna start off spinning the lathe by hand and just getting it nice and covered. And I'll go over the ends of hair now, but they're a lot easier to do once you get it off the lathe. And then I'll flip the lathe on. And just hold on to this really light. You don't want to hold on to it too hard in case it grabs. You don't want to be getting a finger wrapped around this thing because this lathe it does not care. And we'll just kind of massage that oil in. Applying oil with the lathe running helps a decent amount. Just the friction, the extra added friction from the pressure of your fingers will help heat up the wood and the oil and let it soak in a little bit deeper and give you a better finish. But we're not done there. That's the first step. Now, to get a really good waterproof finish on it and make it really shine and glossy, let me cut this off so you can see it before. This is a really good satin finish here, but a lot of people really like a good gloss finish on these. So I'll turn the lathe back on, and this is a piece of Hut Triple P friction polish. It's a hard wax. And we'll just go ahead, rub this on there like that. Get another clean piece of paper towel. And start buffing this back off. And I'll actually turn the RPMs up for this. Get it around 3,000. As you can see, this wax is starting to melt and work its way into the wood. We'll go back and forth a few times, pick another clean spot on our towel. And this does really build up a good amount of heat and lets the wax soak in. As you can see, our towel still has a little bit of wax coming off, so we'll find another clean spot and hit it one last time before we take it off the lathe. And that right there looks really, really good. Got a nice even polish, no sanding line showing through. Really good shape, that'll be a good purchase for your hand. Let's go ahead and get this off a lathe and get this scoop gluing up. All right, so we're over here at the miter saw station now, and we're getting ready to glue this up. I'm gonna find a little mixing rod here. Got me a little scrap piece of wood. And as you'll notice, we got the scoop head, two gold bushings, another gold bushing, and a cap for the end. Now you don't have to put any of the bushings on at all if you don't want to. You can put two this side, two that side, one this side, doesn't matter. The kit comes with three, you can put one and one, two and one, whichever side. So to start off, 
I'm going to go ahead and start putting parts on here. And these don't have a way. I normally just try to pick the better looking side and put it to the front. Because if anything ever happens, that's the side you're going to see first. So now that I got our rough assembly, I'm going to go ahead and pull the top off our epoxy. And we don't need much. Not much at all. Let me get the lid off of this other one. There we go. So. Get two little things of epoxy going on in here. The hardener and the resin. That ought to be enough there. And as you can see, we don't need much at all. I'm going to go ahead and mix this up. And this is nothing special. It's just JB Weld two-part epoxy. Anything will work. This is just a pretty good all-purpose epoxy. And what I'm going to do is on this end that I want the ice cream scoop head to go, I'm going to go ahead and start trying to work some epoxy in here. And I'm actually going to put quite a bit in there. I'd rather have way too much than way too little. Because this has a hole that goes the whole way through it. And any excess... I'd much rather have down in there helping hold it into the handle than scooting out the end or anything else. That ought to be enough for that side. Let me get just a hair a bit more. Start putting it on this end for the cap. And I always try to get a rod or scrap piece of wood that will fit down in the hole. Something about a quarter inch in diameter works pretty well. It holds a decent amount of epoxy onto it and it'll help put it in there. Wipe that off. Had a little bit of epoxy run out the end on this side. All right, so I'm going to insert the head into that end. I'm going to clock our grain. And I have one hell of a mess going on here. I'm dripping epoxy everywhere. Good Lord. Got it all over my hand, all over the bench. Man, I never make messes like this. Put a camera on and I just turn into old sloppy Joe over here. That's probably not a good thing to say, but oh well. Let me stand that up. Let me wipe this off. Get the bench cleaned off. And just for, good Lord, I got it everywhere. I have made one heck of a mess. One more little dab in this end since I had it all run out apparently. And go ahead, seat the cap in that end. As you can tell, it's trying to push itself back out. So we're gonna get ourselves a little quick clamp. Just get it opened up long enough for this ice cream scoop to fit in here. I'm going to try to get it centered up the best I can in the jaws and put a little bit of light pressure on it. I'm going to look for any squeeze out. I got some here and I got from where I made that mess a minute ago. I'm going to go ahead and get a towel and wipe that off.
And as long as you get this epoxy off now, while it's still wet, it won't be too big of a problem to clean off. But once it hardens and starts to set up, it is never coming off of there without some serious sanding. Now you can get epoxy off if it starts to set up just a little bit. If you take a little bit of acetone and put it on this rag, it will thin it and help pull it off. Man, I did make one heck of a mess. So, we'll let this sit about 10 minutes and come back to it and pull it out the clamps. All right, check it out, guys. I just pulled this uh, ice cream scoop out the clamps, left it in there for about 15 minutes or so, just long enough for the epoxy to harden up and take hold without any worries of it coming out on its own. This piece of Pal Rosa has some really nice grain to it, some really nice color, and it turned out really good. These ice cream scoops are a really good beginner's project. They don't take that much time, and they're a real big hit at craft shows or with friends and family around the holidays. I mean, who doesn't love ice cream? So, if you'd like to see some more woodworking videos, especially some wood turning, I have a ton planned for the future. So, hit like, subscribe, and stick around for next time. See y'all.